Welcome to The Right Dishonourable, the podcast where we, myself and Jimmy, we like to talk about current events and bounce ideas off each other so that you too can join in the discussion down below in the comments. Uh, we're here in like physical real form, form like, yeah. like we're actually, we know each other in real life, it's amazing. Um, and this week we are going to be talking about, uh, first of all, the... Uh, Daily Mail and Ralph Miliband case. Ralph Miliband is the father um, and prominent Marxist, uh, the father of Ed Miliband, who is the leader of the uh, Labour Party at the moment. And the Mail, uh, about a week or so ago, posted quite an inflammatory article, um, uh, both on their publication and on their website, uh, saying that Ralph, that Ralph Miliband hated the, the UK and hated this country. And that somehow this reflected on Ed's uh, policies. What is your what were your, your general thoughts about the the, article. Uh, the tone of the article? Well, we both read the article, uh -huh. um, and actually, well, you can explain your own opinion. But I, I didn't think it was anywhere near as bad as the the Labourites kind of made it out to be. If that makes sense. Um, I probably agree. Um, uh, I do think that the tone of it was. It's just the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail are bastards. Well, and they don't research their um, uh, they don't research their uh, stories very well. Um, uh, the whole thing seems to the whole fact that he hated Britain seemed to hinge on the fact that he wrote in his diary once that he thought that British people were overly nationalistic and that they should lose the war. But then that's kind of counteracted by the fact that he went and fought for Great Britain um, in the last couple of years of the war uh, when he was, came of age and mm. that he was a refugee that came from Belgium. Yeah, I mean, someone made the point, actually, that most of what was in that diary extract wouldn't have been out of place in a George Orwell essay, which I think is... That's pretty much true. I mean, the British were quite nationalistic during that period of time especially. Um, but I, th I think, actually, the, the sort of larger point, I guess, is that... Ralph Miliband was a you know a Marxist thinker, which is diametrically opposed to what the Daily Mail agenda is, which is social conservative. So it kind of makes sense that a newspaper like that would be writing an article saying this is a really bad man with really bad opinions. It's yeah. not that surprising that they wouldn't take to him. Yeah. Um, Do you think that the Daily Mail has come off badly in this, or do you think that the only people that are talking about them critically, other people that talked about the Daily Mail critically anyway. I think there's a huge element of that, but you you were citing a poll earlier that so suggests the other, otherwise. Yeah, there was a poll that said that 60% of uh, Daily Mail readers said that they disapproved of that article. Whether or not they're going to stop reading the Daily Mail, I don't think that that's well, going to Well, we'll have to see if the Daily Mail takes a 66% sales hit, which seems pretty unlikely. No, probably And would still leave them with, with more readers than The Guardian, so, you know. Not hard, though. About three people read The Guardian. No, one you of them. And, Yeah, you and me <laughs> are, are included. Do you... What about uh, Ed Miliband? Do you think that he's milking it a bit? Because that's something that a lot of Conservatives have been criticising him for, that he's taken this opportunity to make himself all cuddly and fluffy and vulnerable and talk he, about he, his dad. He would have been stupid not to kind of make something of this, but I did feel like, did you see the BBC interview with him, like, afterwards, where he said I how, didn't explain. Well, he, he, he just comes up and says how he's willing to take the normal amount of muckraking and mudslinging that newspapers will level against a politician and how he appreciates that because Britain has a free press and the usual kind of cliches about it, but... Then he went on to say, you know, if they target my dad, then they've overstepped the mark, which I actually disagree with. I think if you have a father who's a serious political academic, it would be very strange if he... That wasn't considered yeah, that wasn't and wasn't brought into the equation. Um, I mean, there was, a, there was an, an article written about uh, David Cameron's dad, who was, you know, unsurprisingly, given Cameron's background, was far more conservative. Um, and I, I, haven't, I haven't read that article, but if that article didn't examine him closely and say, well, he did this with his life and this is what he thought. But they didn't claim that David Cameron's dad hated Britain. No, that's true. But it's, Which it's, is a very strong and very inflammatory statement. And you can't It is, expect... but it's, it's the mail. I no, mean, no. That, that's, that's what the mail does. And then, but then you don't see The Guardian calling David Cameron's dad a massive knobhead. 
But you who, do. Who stood for all of the? You do have reasons. fairly regularly people saying that how you know Cameron is just an out of touch Tory that doesn't understand the price of milk. It's, yeah. It's, and that's to be that, fair. I don't know the price of milk either, so right. I don't know why that question keeps on getting asked. Hasty poo. I don't bloody know. Oh, I, I'm lactose intolerant. I don't drink milk. <laughs> That aside, you know, I mean, that's a pretty similar criticism. It's a criticism based on where you came from rather than who you are as a person. And admittedly, you know, Cameron joined the Bullingdon Club when he went to Oxford, so he's obviously not averse to that kind of background. Mm -hmm. But I think it's fair to attack a politician's background, to be honest. I... But is he milking it? Do you think that he's jumped on this opportunity? Because let's be fair, Ed Miliband is, or as I like to call him, Ed Millie Willie Diddy. Billy Dilly Mini Giddy Band. Um, he hasn't. He is polling much lower than his party at the moment, or he was before this. And this has kind of humanised him a bit. It used to be that he just people just used to say that he looked like a melted version of his brother, without yeah, I mean, any charisma. He does in a way, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not that impressed by his brother either. But I think his brother certainly looked the part. If we're going to go in for that line of mm -hmm. superficiality. Um, I mean, what did you make of it? Did you think he was, oh, did you think he was over-egging it, or do you think he played it well? So I think that if I were in that situation where anybody was bad mouthing my dad, I think that it's a very natural and human response to have to to want to go out there and publicise your response to it, um, and to want to defend him and say, well, this is bloody ridiculous. He fought in the blooming war for Christ's sake. Mm. What's wrong with you? Um, I do think that, I mean, of course it's been used as a uh, chance for them to spin his image and make him uh, more likeable. Whether or not that translates into people thinking he's more electable, I think that's a completely different argument. I don't think that just because somebody's likeable that they're necessarily electable. Well, I was going to say, actually, um, before this, I said how a lot of media events are kind of puffed up by, particularly the press, because the press need to create crises and things. 24 to, hour news yeah, cycle. Well yeah, to, to sell news and so, but the actual effect of any one of these events individually is, is often negligible um, or it's often, you know, way overstated in the press. So do you think that this is just a big blow up for no particular reason? Do I, think I don't think anyone's going to remember this by the time the general election rolls went round. Really? I don't think so. I mean, if we're still doing videos in eight, how long is it, 18 months time or? slightly longer. Yeah. If we're still doing videos then, if people remember it, then say so, but I don't think I'll think about this in, by the time the general election rolls around. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Do you think that this is going to affect uh, press regulation? Because that's something that has been used in the same breath because the Leveson inquiry, yeah, I mean, the, has been, their, their conclusions have been That published. That does worry me because you know, although we both have our differences of opinion with the Daily Mail, to say the least, but I, I personally think I want it to remain, well, I want, that, I want the legal situation to remain so that they can still be them, if that makes sense. I may not approve of what it is that they actually publish all of the time, but I still want a press that is free enough so that people can express distasteful opinions in public. Mm -hmm. So that does worry me slightly, because I think... Do you think that the press is going to be treading more lightly now. Because they they said this during the uh, Levis inquiry, that the, that the press is going to be muted slightly because it's going to be scared of overstepping that line again. I think but this has obviously shown that they're still going to quite happily. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit safer though when you're, you know, defaming someone who's dead. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the problem is that there's a big, you know, a build up of public opinion that wants the press to be censored, basically. That, that's what worries me, I mean. We'll see what happens. It's a it's been more or less a constant fight between the press and people who want to censor the press throughout British history. So, in some ways, I suppose it in the long term it might not matter, but it it could mean that over the next few years that you have a press that is less likely to attack, you know, certain or criticise certain figures. I don't think that that is something that we need to worry about at all. I think that the Daily Mail knows exactly what it's playing to when it posts and when it publishes articles like this? Well, you, you could argue that they anticipated, you know, this huge backlash, but everyone's, you know, read If the they anticipated and, and the backlash, yeah. then they would have known that there would have been this chance for Ed Miliband to 
jump on this to improve his image. Mm. So maybe they're actually, well, they, in they a might... very roundabout way, trying to get a Labour government in, in 2015. Seems spectacularly unlikely. Well, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Um, let us know what you guys think about uh, this attack by the Daily Mail. Do you think that they've overstepped a boundary? Do you think that we need to worry about uh, press regulation and whether this is going to adversely affect press freedom? Is there anything else that you want to ask the lovely people? Do you like Jess's hair? Do you like my hair? He was going to get it cut, but it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> An insight into the preparation process of the right dishonourable. Right, uh, next we're talking about... What are we talking about? Uh, the EDL and... The English Defence League! Yeah, and Tommy Robinson And defending Robinson England. Down. Yes. Right, see you on the other side of this. Bye! Say All goodbye. Right. Say goodbye! Say goodbye! Bye. Bye. You used to drink bottled gems and the whole out of sync You thought you was not so far We used to dance and take a chance I lost my mind to young romance Yeah, I don't mind, I got it back Half the time I'm waiting for a second chance Time